So, anyways, we have this problem here where we are dividing this polynomial by this. Now, let me clean this up a little bit. It's a little messy there. Um, this is plus. 1p to the third. Now originally it doesn't have the 1p to the third, but I wrote the ones down. So basically what we're doing is we're dividing by a binomial. Remember a binomial means two terms. Bi means two like a bicycle. Nomial means terms. So this is two terms. p is one term and positive five is a term. So when we do long division, we want to focus on a couple of things. We do the first term into the first term, and then we multiply by the binomial. So I'm going to get rid of this. This is the solution, but I'm going to get rid of that. But let me step you through how we got the answer on this problem. So what I want to do is I want to think to myself, what do I multiply this by? To get this. In other words, what do I multiply p by to get p to the fourth? That's that first term going into the first term. This is the first term, and this is the first term going into it. Well, to get p to the fourth, I have to multiply by p to the third because remember we're adding 3 plus 1, which adds up to 4. But when I write this down, I have to multiply p to the third times this positive 5. So that gives me a plus 5 p cubed. Well then I have to multiply p to the third by p and that actually just gives me a positive p to the fourth. But because we add the opposites this becomes negative and this becomes negative. These will add up to 0 and then I have to say 1 minus 5 which is actually negative 4p to the third. Right? So then again I say to myself, what do I multiply p by to get negative 4p to the third? Well, negative 4p squared. Because negative 4 times the one in front of the p is my negative 4. Okay. Then p squared times um, p is just p to the third. Okay, that's that's why where this comes from. But we got to multiply this by this. So negative 4 times positive 5 equals a positive 20. And then we tack on the p squared. That has to go under here because we can only add the squares to the squares. Now, technically it's a negative 20, right? Because negative 4 times positive 5 is a negative 20. Then when I multiply negative 4p times this. This is technically negative 4p cubed. But we're adding opposites, so the, both those negatives become positive. These will add up to 0. This adds up to negative 6p squared. Again, I have to think to myself, what is this first term going to be multiplied by to go into this first term? I come up with negative 6p. I have to multiply by the binomial. In other words, I got to multiply this by this, and I got to multiply this by this. So if I say negative 6p times neg or positive 5, well then this would be a negative 30. Oh, my nose is itching. Or it just itches. Um, this is going to be negative 30p. And then if I multiply negative 6p times p, this becomes negative 6p. So those originally start off as negatives, but then we add the opposite. So this negative becomes a positive. This negative becomes a positive. These add up to 0. And then 30 minus 24 becomes 6. Okay. Way up here is my 30. i got to drop down my 30. Again, I think, what do I multiply p by to get 6p? Well, it's just positive 6. Okay? Just positive 6. Okay? But what's positive 6 times 5? Positive 30. 
And then positive 6 times P is just positive 6P. But then I add the opposite, so this becomes negative and this becomes negative. I have a, radius, or a remainder of 0. So this is technically my answer, this top line here. Now let's do it with synthetic division. Remember with synthetic division we have to have the solution. We're dividing by p plus 5 so that assumes that p plus 5 is a 0. So if it's a factor, really it's the factor that's uh, of the polynomial. So we solve for p and we subtract 5 from both sides and we get p equals negative 5. In other words, if I were to graph this graph, the point negative 5 comma 0 occurs on this graph. So I'm going to over here put negative 5. Then I write a column for p to the fourth, p to the third, p to the second, p to the first, p to the zero. So over here I have 1 p to the fourth, so I put a 1 here. Over here I have 1 p to the third, I put a 1 here. Over here I have 26, negative 26, I put negative 26 here. So we're writing down the coefficients of each power of p. Remembering to tack on whatever sign there is. If it's positive, we tack on the positive. If it's negative, we tack on the negative. So once I get all that lined up, the first step is I just, whatever this term is, I just drop it down here. Then I say negative 5 times 1, that gives me negative 5. Add that up, that gives me negative 4. This times this gives me a positive 20. Negative 5 times negative 4 gives me a positive 20. Add these up and I get negative 6. And then I take negative 6 and multiply it by negative 5, I get a positive 30. Add those up, I get 6. Negative 5 times 6 is actually a negative 30. Add those up. I get a remainder of 0. Remembering that if this is p to the 4th power, and technically we're dividing by p, then this becomes p to the 3rd, p squared. It's one power less than this column up above. This is p to the 1st, so technically this is p to the 0. So that's both of them. That's the same algorithm we've done for all these other uh, polynomials. I think sometimes it's better just to kind of crank through it and not have to write it down. Does anybody have any questions about what I got and where I got it from? Okay. So now I'm going to do one more.